Good morning, folks. Today we have an erupting plasma filament, news on the sun's polar cycles, earthquakes, weather, and another look into one of our less usual topics. I don't mind saying that upon consuming the last news story today, the only emotion recognizable within me was pure unbridled rage. First, let's come to spaceweathernews.com and check out the last day on our star. You saw this to start in 304 angstroms, filament cresting over the northeastern limb lifted and released. It's not coming at Earth, and the other northern filament at the polar crown remains stable as well. Also don't need to be concerned with any ejecta that may have come from the coronal ripple on the southeastern quadrant either. Bit of activity on the disk, but nothing too scary. Solar flaring. Even the uptick in activity can't take on the Earth-facing quiet effect. These sunspots had every opportunity to get complex before they departed, but it looks like he'll say goodbye before producing geo-effective space weather. The solar wind here shows impact of a coronal hole stream, density shockwave out ahead of faster, hotter particles, and thus far Earth's magnetic field has handled it well. No storm conditions. The streams come from that dark, departing coronal hole. It was also the maker of a quake watch. Today is the last day for it, and before it waned, we saw a 6.4 strike Fiji overnight and a volcano eruption in the Indian Ocean. Now, while the watch from the coronal holes wanes today, we still have the Saturn opposition of the sun in just six days, so a return to calm conditions may be somewhat less than certain. Folks, this is a very cool article, one of two on the sun's hemispheric asymmetry that we're going to discuss this weekend during Fly on the Wall. The asymmetric topic is not exactly super simple and even less interesting. Until they discover an approximately 40 to 44 year solar cycle that was previously unknown even to the most obsessed solar watchers like myself. This is Lake Mead back in 1984, NASA's Earth Observatory showing the current decrease in water levels above the Hoover Dam and the drought here. Folks, there is new news out of Fukushima. Nearly 600 tons of nuclear fuel remain sitting at the bottom of the reactors, but they don't know exactly where, only that it's still undergoing fission. It'll cost about $240 billion and take 40 years to clean up, and that's not including the 10 million plastic bags of contaminated material scattered across the site. Thomas Ashcraft, one of the best sprite photographers in the world, Caught a rare one last night over Oklahoma, a possible gigantic jet. Story at spaceweather.com. The storms that produced those sprites dropped everything from tornadoes to snow across the expanse of the low. More is expected tonight, but also expected is the formation of a tropical system off the east coast. Now, I see no evidence that it will hit hurricane strength, but it's not going to have to. The rain it brings at the Carolinas is going to remind folks of Joaquin from last year. Now this. I know there are some of you out there like me. You want to get up and do something when you see our species shirking its duty as guardian of the fauna. Tyson Foods, one of the worst offenders, caught again in an undercover video. Observer's event in front of the Carthage facility. Pitchforks required. Don't worry guys, we're going to get what we deserve in due time. If you only have one click today, share that anti-animal cruelty video, but if you have time for two, check out suspiciousobservers.org. It's 3.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.